Hey everybody, it's me, round two of the uh, Mental Illness Awareness Week um, story series. So um, yesterday we talked about how schooling was uh, in my elementary and junior high um, time. Um, some people had uh, reached out to me and asked me why I didn't um, do clubs or anything like that. So I can explain that. Um, yes, I actually was a part of, um, dance classes as well as Girl Scouts and other things. Um, uh, dance was okay for me. Um, it wasn't really my niche, I guess, but I did it. Um, they actually had a dance program in my elementary school. Um, I enjoyed that very much. So, um, it wasn't bad. I didn't have any issues there. Um, but my mom decided to, um, take us to a different kind of dance school, um, maybe more potential over there. Um, unfortunately that dance school was in a better neighborhood and, um, I was bullied at that dance school by kids from a better neighborhood. Um, cause you know, I lived in the ghetto town, you know what I'm saying? Um, so it didn't really, that part didn't really help me very much, um, and I didn't want to do it anymore. And then I did Girl Scouts uh, for 13 years of my life. But um, unfortunately, um, I had a really great um, troop of Girl Scouts in the early years. And that leader wasn't going to be doing it anymore. So I ended up in another troop with a bunch of girls that um, just weren't really in it. And um, because the leader leader didn't have money or funds to really do anything I got bored and um I started lashing out in the group because I just wanted to to do Girl Scout things like go camping and learn things but these girls were just using it as a socialization thing and um it just wasn't for me anymore um I really want to make I got this silver award and I really wanted the gold award but these girls stopped and honestly I really didn't want to be with these girls anymore anyway so um and I was in the band I was in the band from uh fourth grade till um junior high school um when I got to junior high school and things got really bad um, I just didn't want to be a part of it anymore. And when I went to high school, they didn't have um, band because I ended up in a special ed program. So, you know, even as a younger person, my um, anxiety and depression from the abuse affected um, me enjoying things that I liked or loved. Um, well, I mean, I guess I really didn't like or love those things too much anymore. Um, they really weren't meant for me. They became not my gig anymore. Um, but the one thing that I always had growing up was, uh, reading books and listening to music and, um, you know, uh, crafts at home. I got big into latch hook rugs, uh, um, things like that. Um, I know people always suggest those adult coloring books, but I never really found them to be quite helpful for me. So, um, so yeah, I did try clubs and organizations, um, at that time. I just lost interest and, um, things like that. Um, sad, but that's what happened. Um, so, um, moving forward, I guess we could talk about high school and how things were there. Um, like I said, I, I ended up going into a mental health facility at the age of 13 due to the abuse of my elementary and um, junior high school years. Um, and thanks to all of that, um, I ended up having to be on, uh, all different kinds of medications, you name it, I've probably be, been on it. Um, back then CBD oil, I don't think was a thing, although CBD oil is a thing now and most psychiatrists don't, um, support or, uh, you know, suggest that option. Um, so I left, um, the, uh, the regular school, um, just before, um, graduating junior high school, um, I was not welcome at my junior high school graduation, as I had mentioned in the last video, because they thought I would be a distraction, um, that which felt like a punishment, you know, not being able to walk in your own graduation is a punishment in my opinion. Um, there were some girls um, that were bullying me that came forward and tried to apologize. Uh, well, one apologized. One did apologize. The other one just felt bad that I had left. Um, 
you know, um, I was not, um, so from that point on, not only was I not allowed at my junior high school graduation, I was not going to be allowed to return to, um, public school ever again. Um, you know, parts of me used to think that this is a punishment and, um, not really a reward, but then there were times where I thought it was a reward and not a punishment because I ended up in a high school that, um, was full of kids who have had issues like me, um, possibly bullying. This was a school for kids who didn't have learning disabilities because I never had a learning disability. In fact, in order to get into, um, this, these programs, I had to go through an IQ test. And at the age of 13, I was reading a college level. Um, of course, because, you know, I, I used to read six to 12 books a week. Um, you know, that's all I really had. I didn't have friends to hang out with, um, outside of school, even in high school. Um, the high school that I had, um, was a special ed school. So it wasn't a district school. It was everybody in the, um, Eastern Suffolk, uh, uh, area, um, so, you know, and a lot of these other kids, they either, they might have had, you know, a home to go to, or they were living in a group home, so hanging out was really hard. Um, trust is a very big issue also, is, you know, just because, you know, we go to the same school and we're acting kind of cool and stuff, I was always afraid to hang out with people. But some of them I kind of did and kind of didn't hang out with outside of school, you know, just for birthday parties, nothing like, you know, oh, we're going to the mall or anything like that. Um, that was the one downside to growing up is that I never had that experience of just going to the mall with a group of friends or, you know, going to the movies or, I mean, I went to slumber parties, but I was usually picked on at those parties. So, um, I didn't become a big fan of that. Um, so, uh, high school wasn't terrible though. I mean, despite, you know, the fact that I didn't have friends to hang out with, um, the only thing is I, I could tell at that age that society wasn't accepting of those, um, who go through those issues. Um, so the one thing I really needed and wanted in life was to be accepted, um, by somebody, I guess, you know, you know, when you're growing up and you're going through a bullying thing and your mom's saying, well, I love you and that matters, you know, that's true, but it's not true. You need society and friends to kind of have some love and acceptance towards you. You know, when I went to the high school, when I was in high school, you know, like I said, a lot of people, a lot of people liked me there and, you know, they had a, I had all kinds of fun nicknames and, um, you know, I was funny, the teachers loved me and things like that. But, you know, I guess it just wasn't enough at the time, you know, um, uh, you know, I was just searching for the love that I never received in, um, elementary school. You know, I had, I, I had to grow up really fast because I was in a very adult-like situation going into the mental health, uh, facility and taking these medications and dealing with these things, being raped at 13 and, um, all these kinds of things. Um, I never really had a normal childhood at all, you know, um, based on that, you know, um, since the age of six, I knew, I always thought in my mind that I was ugly and useless and, not worthy of anything. And sometimes today I still feel that way. I still feel ugly. And I'm sure there's somebody here who will say, oh yeah, you're, you're ugly, Kelly. And I'm, I'm, I'll accept that because I know you're right. You know, um, you know, it's, it's a sad thing. I mean, when I got into high school, um, you know, like I said, most of the people in my high school really liked or loved me, but you know, I wasn't dateable or, you know, good looking. I was overweight. You know, that was another thing is, um, thanks to the, um, mental health drugs in the hospital, I had put on a lot of weight. Um, I went into the hospital a size six and came out a size 16, you know, in less than six months due to the medications. And, you know, when you're in a facility like that, they have very high calorie foods. Same thing with the jails. You know, people think that when you're in jail, you're going to lose weight and things like that, but no, their, their foods are actually really high calories and, um, things like that. So, um, I wasn't really self-confident anymore. I was never really self-confident at all because, you know, I just, I always thought I was ugly. 
And um, then I was ugly and fat, you know. I buried my face in food, too, you know. Um, so, you know, I was that cute girl in high school nobody wanted to date because I was not cute. Cute on the, maybe cute as a person, not cute on the outside. Um, I still don't think I'm cute on the outside, you know. But um, I still struggle with um, self-confidence and things like that. Um, but yeah, so, but most importantly, I wanted to be accepted. And on um, the school I was in um, prior to graduating, um, didn't have uh, proms or high school rings and things like that. So back then, if you were in a program like this um, and you want to go to the prom or you wanted a class ring, you would have to go back to your district. And um, mid high school, um, my family moved to another town, um, and I didn't know anybody in that district, and I didn't want to go to a prom full of people that I didn't know. I mean, maybe I could have had fun, but no, I don't think so. Um, so I ended up having to uh, fight my school um, board uh, to get this uh, program a prom as well as class rings. Um, it wasn't just for myself. It was really for everybody else. You know, that's one thing that I can say is that I will fight for everybody. It's not always about me. And, you know, um, I always wanted to go to the prom and feel pretty and things like that. I didn't have a sweet 16. Um, I didn't want one because I didn't think anybody would show up. So I didn't have one. I didn't have a prom because, I mean, a, um, I didn't have a sweet 16 because I knew nobody would come. Like I said, I went to a school full of people who live in a group home or live far away. Um, I did go to one girl's sweet 16. She had a twin sister and, um, you know, she, she was, you know, like me, the awkward one. And, um, you know, her twin sister's friends all showed up and, um, she, um, she ended up having only me show up. I, I'm honored that I was the only one that showed up. So, But I didn't want to put my mom through that. I didn't want to put my mom through paying for this party and then nobody showing up. Um, you know, parties were not things I, I had much of. I mean, I stopped having um, birthday parties in the sixth grade. Um, and after that, never again, because, you know, I had no friends at that rate. I mean... Someone had once said to me, well, why don't your mom just have parties and maybe that's how you make friends. But I'm not one of those kinds of people who think that way. I don't feel like you should have to buy friends or, you know, pay into something to, to make friends. Um, you know, they should like me for who I am, not having a party. Well, I don't really don't think they would have showed up anyways. They hated me so much that, you know, they didn't, they, they wouldn't have came anyways. So, you know... High school, I might have had, actually high school, I did have one dinner and people did come by. It was only like two or three people. Um, but, you know, um, birthday parties was something I never really had. Um, but honestly, I'm not really a party person, oddly enough. I don't, uh, I have agoraphobia. I get nervous and those kinds of things. Probably because of the fact that, you know, when I had the slumber parties and things, I just, I was being, you know, treated illy. Um you know, um, so yeah, so, but I did fight for my school to have a prom, um, actually, um, as an odd turn of events, um, one of the girls that I was in school with, um, from elementary school to junior high school, we talked about her yesterday, um, how she had bullied me, and, you know, another person had stepped forward, and, um, you know, uh, you know, they didn't want, they threatened the other person to, uh, uh, suspend them for instigating. This person actually became my best friend in high school. Um, this person did apologize later on in life and we became really close friends. We don't talk as much anymore now, but, um, you know, there, there was that, that person, me and her actually planned the prom together. Um, she, uh, rented the limo to the prom and things like that. So, um, that was pretty cool. Things, um, did make a interesting turn of events there. Um, I mean, as an adult, I joined Facebook in hopes of, um, making up with all these people, but that didn't happen either. Um, you know, uh, I guess I had that, 
idea that at some point there would be some form of an apology or, you know, oh, I'm sorry I did that. Or, you know, most people say they don't even know that they did it, which is, um, or they say, well, everybody else was doing it, so I just did it too, you know. I mean, there was one time this girl, her name was Jennifer, and um, she, uh, man, she she really, she pretended to be my friend, and um, she manipulated me into putting black lipstick all over my face and made me walk around the school like that. Um, it was horrible. Um, this is why I don't, you know, I'm a little nervous, you know, with friends and things like that now, you know, but, um, it was just rough. Um, but anyways, high school, you know, um, it was not bad. Um, we had field trips to, uh, to, uh, the dude ranch and, and I became really close with people there. I mean, I was still kind of picked on a little bit in high school, um, just simply because I was that cute person that everybody really liked, but it wasn't as bad. Um, but you know, unfortunately, you know, the feelings of, um, the residual feelings from, you know, um, what had happened, uh, prior to that were, um, present and, you know, it made me put my guard up. Um, because of the high school, the uh, junior high school teacher who had the, um, uh, mirror under his desk. I was afraid to be left in a classroom alone with a male teacher. I would actually stand in the hallway, um, away. So I was just that afraid. I was afraid to be in a classroom with a male staff member. Um, you know, um, I did end up kind of having a boyfriend in high school, but, I don't think he was really, you know, I think it was just a joke kind of thing. Um, but, you know, well, you know, sometimes somebody's that cute. They just, you know, they got to have it. But um, it was just a joke thing, you know. Um, I think we were just, you know, it was a weird, weird, weird moment. I don't even know what was going on there. But, um, but see, that's the thing is that I ended up, you know, in a situation where a guy was kind of into me, but not really into me. And. Unfortunately, that's how life um, carried on as an adult, which we'll talk about tomorrow. Um, thank you for stopping by. I hope this wasn't boring. <laughs> I apologize if it is, but I just feel like I need to talk about this a little bit more and more um, since it is Mental Illness Awareness Week. Um, just putting this out there, I really have no personal gains on this video series at all. Um, I'm not looking to get anybody in trouble, not that anybody can get in trouble, um, no names are being mentioned and there won't be any names mentioned, um, here on out. Um, I mean, the only thing I would like is a book deal. <laughs> um, I've been writing, um, a memoir for years. Um, but anyways, thank you for coming by and remember kindness is free. Um, and, uh, thank you.